I'm going to call the planning board meeting June 5th, 2023 to order. And Emily, could you please read the record? I can. This meeting will be held in a hybrid fashion with the opportunity for both in person attendance and remote participation in accordance with House Bill number 58 of the 193rd General Court, which extended the governor's March 12, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law. MGL 30A or Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31st, 2025. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation is being provided as a courtesy for the public, the meeting hearing will not be suspended or terminated if technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast as well, unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with particular interest in any specific item on this agenda should make plans for in person versus virtual attendance accordingly. For purposes of in-person attendance, the town of Deerfield will host the meeting in the main meeting room of the Deerfield Municipal Offices with remote participation details noted below. Thank you for that enthusiastic reading. Emily. Well, I'll do it more poetically next. Right. Okay. So guidelines for the business meeting, please speak one at a time, follow Deerfield code of conduct, be respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and be recognized by the chair. Um, let's do a roll call. So Rachel Blade, Blade here. Here, Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord here. Kathy Matroba. Kathy Matroba here. Emily Wolf. Wolf. Emily Wolf here. And Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester here. All right. So the only one absent is Andrew Leibson, who lives in France. Lucky woman. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see. Let's go ahead. Do we have any minutes to review? We do not. All right. We will table them to next time. Just so everybody, I, I will have them next time. I'll, I'll get them to any before I okay. too long. But yeah, yeah, we're working on these together. Okay. Yeah. Sounds great. Thanks, Rachel. Okay. So I'm going to do, as I said, to be kind to our guests this evening, that we're going to, I think, uh, if everyone agrees, we're going to do the A&R first, the new business. All right, great. So if you'd like to come up to the mic, please. And introduce yourself. Hi, I'm Sherry Stringer, River Road. Okay, and if you could speak into the mics, you know, so they can hear you. Oh, how that, that one works. Okay. Again, hi, I'm Sherry Stringer. I live on River Road in East Jersey. Thank you. And Bob, would you like to, can you um, explain what uh, Ms. Strand is doing? Yeah, it's a pretty straightforward. She She's just dividing her property up and they're, well, it's all gonna be legal lots. So I didn't see any issue with it. I didn't delve too deep in it. I checked the frontage in the, the area. Um, I said I I didn't have any issues with it. Yeah, no, that's right. Okay, no, that's good to know. Has everyone had a chance to take a look? Any questions, Emily? I'm sorry, yes, Bob. You mentioned that she's dividing the lot. The application states just the removal of the house and cutting out house and eight point eight seven acres. I guess I don't quite understand in relation to the map. So. If you need a chance, you can put the map up. All right, well, we have the map in front of us. Yeah. Bob, are you there? Are you frozen? I can hear you. Oh, OK. OK. Did yeah, she's, she's separating out the piece with the house and barn. So cutting it the, the, the frontage piece out and leaving the back and the side piece. Yeah, but she left herself over 200 feet of frontage for the back also. Right. Yeah. Okay. All right. Does that answer your question, Emily? So I'm sorry, the front piece is River Road piece, and that's staying the same, correct? Mm -hmm. no. no. Well, all the way to the no. I think maybe it's a little hard to understand because you can't see the whole rest of the lot. The the lot, the eight acres that's being separated is part of a much bigger lot, the boundaries of which you cannot see on that um, map that you have for the AMR. The lot goes uh, way back. So the, this part is staying with it. 
the back row, and they're just cutting out those pieces. Oh, I just, there's like another 60 acres uh -huh. behind that that abuts. Okay. Just see. Well, we do have that many. We've got it. Okay. All right. Where's that? So here, Sherry, my couple over by you. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much. I will be the Carol Merrill. Okay. <laughs> Explain. I mean, my name. Okay, this is the southern line. Yeah. And then this one up here is the northern line. That's, I don't, I can't remember that name, but that runs like by the Sportsman Center. Mm -hmm. And so I'm leaving 200 over 200 feet with with the frontage on River Road with the remaining land, and then we're cutting out this not quite nine acre parcel um, for my use. Well, it's all going to be in my use. What happened is my mother left this to uh, my brother and I by way of survivorship. My brother passed away, and I would like to get my sister, my his widow, my sister-in-law's name on this property so that she has the benefit of that at some point. It's a, it's a bit of a flylock. Did you talk about that, Bob? I mean, well, the, as a fl flag lot, it's got 200 feet of frontage. I mean, it's not really a flag lot. Right. Okay. That's the concept, right? Because it's the big, big bit out back. Right. Securing the front house. Okay. Okay. Right. Thank you for that. Okay. Yes, thanks, Rachel. Yeah. Okay. So, does anybody have I move that we additional questions? Oh. Excuse me. I was going to move that we move to endure <laughs> Move to endorse. Um, with the second. Thanks, Rachel. Like Emily, all right, take a vote. Rachel? I vote yay. Yes. Emily? Emily Gaylord, yes. Kathy? Kathy yes. 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 Emily? Emily Wolfcorn, yes. Kathy Sylvester? Kathy Sylvester, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. So I think we're all set. Thank you. Thank You're you. welcome. And then I come back and pick up the um, signed copies. Or... Well, we can do it right now. Everyone, it's sure. I will just sign it right now. It's right going to be registered right away. Yeah. It's just easier. Yeah. Amy, I think there are there five copies there, Amy? She's muted. I think there are five. Yeah, so Bob, I think we're good. Unless you want to hang out for the rest of the meeting. No? Okay. All right. Thanks, Bob. We don't have anyone else waiting, so no, this is great. Yeah. They go on. I know. What do you mean by how it works? You know what? Well, I'm going to say I was very, very nervous. Oh, me too. That was really fun. And you know what? I think I had it for a long time. And then it was all the same. Um, Beautiful man. Yeah, dress. I don't know. 
Amy, which one do we keep? Okay, so um, we keep a couple of the papers and she Ooh. should take the mylar that needs to go to the Registry of Deeds. And I'm sorry, I should have left you out my uh, instructions for the Registry of Deeds, but I, I'll be happy to uh, email them to you. Um, and then once it's registered, we just like to have the book and page number for our records. So we'll keep two? Yeah, we'll keep two. Good. It's a good thing you're doing. It's a good thing we are doing. Okay, the next on our business is Old Frontier. I think it's next Amp Solar and Okay. Yeah, and to my knowledge, I think according to the fire uh, chief, fire commander, saying that there are a few, a few things outstanding, and let's see, according to them, it's the site access and training are the two that he said he could think of, so I think we need more clarification, a better clarification on that, Amy. So I'll talk to you about that again. So I'm not clear what the next step is on that. Yeah, I, I think it's that they, you know, they need to get um, that taken care of and, and so that the fire department can sign off, but they have uh, done what they need to do with the batteries. Uh, okay. It's not just the fire department though, is it? It's all of our conditions that have well, those those are the two conditions that the planning board set forth. I think that that they have not done. I mean, if I look, if you look back in the email, I believe it says some. Of, he said some of the conditions of the special permit issued by the planning board are still outstanding. Right. So we have to look at our conditions. Right. Right. So um, I'll take a look at that and then get back and I'll talk to Amy about that. So I'm not sure whether it's the site access and training. So I'm, I'm not really clear on that, Amy. So I'll, I'll check in with you on that one. Okay. Okay. That sounds good. Amy, could you send me the conditions so far? I can do it here. Amy, can you send me the conditions? Because I think it predates when I was on planning board. Oh, for sure. So I just want to yeah. have them. Um, sure. What I'll do is I'll, I'll send the uh, decision. I, I thought I did send that, but I will send uh, the decision uh, for that to everyone so you can uh, see what it says. That would be great. Thanks, Amy. Okay. So we'll do that. We'll take a look at that and probably have that on the agenda for the next meeting just to hopefully clear that up. All right. So let's see. Next on the agenda, standard conditions. And these are conditions that that we worked with and mostly Annalee worked with Karen from PVPC on. So we have a list of the standard conditions. And I think, yeah. So I don't know if everyone had a chance to look at them, um, but these are, I mean, it's sort of like, it's a, a menu. So, you know, depending upon what we're looking at, you know, we can take a look at these conditions and see which ones fit. And they aren't necessarily all the conditions here. For instance, for sunny days, we added quite a few more depending upon what the project is. But I think this is a great start so we don't have to try and go for the offer. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So I think these are good. So if you want to just take a look, you know, continue to look at these. And then if you think of anything else, then we can add them for our next meeting and just put that on. So does anyone have any questions about conditions? I mean, I think it's a great tool to have. I know that. 
I know that yeah. the cons con has, but I think how many are there, Amy? They have like I think 57 different ones to choose from. So I don't 71. Know. <laughs> Ours are quite not not quite yeah. as expensive, but still great to have yeah. them. Yeah, but it is very handy that way when the decision comes down, um, you know, you can just edit that document a little and toss it right in and then add anything else that you have that might be a special condition. Um, but it, it makes a very nice base to start with. Right. Okay, thank you. All right, any questions on that and comments on conditions? We'll move on to the planner. The next steps, and that's to review the job description. And I think um, that was something that uh, the um, personnel board and Casey worked on and then took it to the select board and they had some comments and additions. So this is what we have. And I think that Casey did want to send it out to the respective boards to see, see what everyone had to say. So let's see. Just, has everyone had a chance to look through that? Mm -hmm. I did. I was curious, and maybe we know this, but did we like consult with planners to build? Like, who's reviewed this so far? To my knowledge, <laughs> uh, Casey Personnel Board and the Select Board. I don't know. Anna, do you know? I started out um, and consulted with. Four or five. They got okay, the job great. descriptions for four or five local. Perfect. Okay. That, I just and wanted to do sure it was That's yeah. great. I just wanted to make sure because I don't feel like part of why we need a planner is I don't feel like I'm supposed to be in a planner. That's the thing. Yeah. That's right. I forgot that Casey said that Annalie had put in a lot of work on this so yeah. prior to not, you know, sending it to the personnel board. So, and, and I think, you know, if you read it, it is. You know, it's it's somewhat fluid, mm -hmm. and so I think you know, as far as um, the planners concerned for the planning board, I think that will, you know, we'll probably need the planners' help sometimes more than others. It's mm -hmm. you know, I don't think it's going to be a twenty four seven kind of thing, but I think it's going to be great to have the planner to to um, look at grants, to work on grants, and still with help of you know, the administration and some of the uh, volunteers, which I'm one of, <laughs> to help with grant writing. But, um, so I think that'll be really good. And I, you know, I'm not sure when there, I think Casey said that she wanted everyone the boards to look at it before it was then actually officially put out um, you know, in the different areas. I am always surprised um, by this the physical skills involved, but the, the, the detail of that is kind of impressive to me. You have to do that. I know. Yeah. yeah. Denise? Well, what, what, how many pounds do you have to say? 30? Up to 30 pounds. Denise? That's, that's like just holding my two cats. <laughs> Um, I had the opportunity, if you will, to, um, I attended the personnel board, which looked at an earlier edition of the um, job description, and then that job description that was approved by the personnel board went to the select board, I'm not sure who else, and then that's how this edition came forward. Um, I'm intrigued and would prefer otherwise, but it went through the select board. That the first two, well, the first, the second and third bullets on um, here, no, the first two bullets are grants. Mm -hmm. And this is planning and economic development, working with the land grant, um, the land uh, boards. That's kind of not the approach of the other. Interestingly, the other towns often say, boy, the planners more than often earn their money in grant revenue, but their main responsibilities are working with planning. Mm -hmm. The other piece that certainly was a difference was um, well, things like the maintaining a web presence. Um, it sounds like the web planning board web then website might now come under a pretty highly paid 
So I don't know. I just that was those were two of the largest differences between this and the mm -hmm. earlier job description that the um, oh that's at the bottom. Oh right, you know, Annalie. I mean, when I looked at this, I mean, I don't know whether it's necessarily in order of importance. I think these are just all the different tasks. And then I think, uh, you know, I think there's going to be sort of an ebb and flow as, you know, as what's needed. I mean, there are different times of year that the grant, she'll be, she, he, she will be working on grants uh, more than other times of year. And just as we, you know, when we get um, a big project, let's say, for instance, Sunny Days or Besh, oh, Besh wasn't that well, the initial project was big. Then I think that we'll be working a lot closer with the planner. But so I think I think you know the way I look at it, it's sort of fluid. So it's not inappropriate to suggest a reorder of bullet points potentially. I think that like if you are thinking about it from an applicant perspective and understanding this is not mm -hmm. an employer's market, it's an app applicant market. There is something to be said for making our job description competitive. Okay. And and maybe we do want to come up with and that you know I might want to introduce some language of like and maybe we can't do this. I don't know what the rules and regulations are from the personnel board, but like it's a really exciting time to be a community. We've got a lot going on. There's the campus, there's a bunch of new initiatives. They could be a real like steward of some mm -hmm. new economic development. Um and it would be kind of exciting to see some of that make it in here in terms of if if the planner were coming from even within the valley, but not mm -hmm. from your field, they may or may not be right. Can I just also suggest that uh, Emily's, I mean, the second bullet point was the one that lists grant application that, you know, more in the suite of um in a suite of job tasks, right? Mm -hmm. And so perhaps even just swapping those around so that it is um, mm -hmm. clear that uh, any grant writing would be relative to development, relative to um, the activity of- And is this different than what we're supposed to? Posted the job posting versus the job description are two different things. Oh yeah, no, that they, they all of this wouldn't be posted. Well, so then, what, yeah. I mean, I don't, I don't know. That's what you know. I mean, you can't, you can't post this entire thing. It would be, you know, cost million dollars to post this. No, but oh well, depending on where you post on different ads. But I don't know. I, I guess that's a good question to ask Casey. But you know what? Um, what I think might be helpful is. Emily, for what you just said, if you can send mm -hmm. any kind of any comments at Annalie, if you can send the comments and Rachel, any comments, just send them to me and then I will I'll forward them on. Sure. And, you know, just I'll forward yeah, them on to you. And then um, I also have some I have had my hand up that provide some good um, places to post mm -hmm. them specific the planners so I can send I think, did you send that to Anna Lee already? Because I think Anna Lee, I, I summarized it with some other. And I, I forwarded it back to Casey. Oh, okay. Excellent. So then, um, actually, I think I'll have to forward that again. Because I think that I recall, I think it just, it bounced back. Because I think they were having issues. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah, I recall that happening. Yeah. So I think you can send it to Casey. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 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 No, I have it. I know it bounced back when I sent it to Casey, so I'll do that again. And but so it may also be Annalie that works with others in the administrative office to maintain this web presence. That the web presence, I agree. <laughs> but the idea that the, a planner would be in charge of that could be, yeah, I know. What it is. And so that there might be a other job description, right? Right. right. So it may be that that. that the, that's less of a bullet point than its own bullet point than it is maybe back in the suite of bullet points. That is communication, you know, coordinating communication with the oh, I don't know. So Kathy, which over here. So so this is pretty complex and, and there's certainly depth to this role in this position. So it looks as though this individual will report by and large directly to the town administrator and the select board. So that's their key 
primary, uh, the first place to go. I don't think they're reporting to the select board. I think they're reporting to Casey okay. to make sure the that the select board is. Yeah, yeah. Is so that's their umbrella. Um, I mean, in, I, I would agree um, with Emily that this, you know, this is sort of innovative and this is a great opportunity to get in and in a community that really has some great ideas. But it is, it is, a, it's, it's a lot of information to um, sort of manage in an in independent fashion. So really looking at who their contact people are within the administration will be helpful to them to get consistent direction um, that, yes, yeah, I, I mean, so the the individual that this person will communicate in a primary fashion with will get consistent information, consistent language, so that um, they're not getting information from different places, different types of language to be able to do this very comprehensive job. Like I, I use the analogy of puppies, you know, five people training one puppy, puppy and it's an untrained dog, right? Yeah. <laughs> so it, it, in support of this individual who mm -hmm. has this job, it, I think right. it might be important. One thing I think the way it's planned that case is the main point of contact and okay. things would go through her. Yeah. So it's not like I'd be talking directly or anyone, mm -hmm. anyone else would be talking directly to the planner, go through Casey, and then yeah. she would you know, facilitate facilitate that. Okay. So yeah, so any any um questions? Yeah, and, and I'm happy to um, I just want to know if the posting, like I'm assuming this is going to go out on like the various job boards and things like that. I just want to know if the language is going to be different than this. Mm -hmm. And if so that feels important to me right. in terms of attracting the right kids. Right. I'm not sure. That's a good question. Yeah, okay. Okay. yeah, I think this is important enough that we as the planning board want to have follow up at our meetings on what's happening. If we're still on the same day. Yeah. yeah, definitely. Okay, good. Can you, so, you hear me? Yes. Oh, good. Because I've had my hand up and I haven't. <laughs> that I don't good. exist over here. <laughs> um, I just want to know if this person would be attending our meetings because it's not in the job description. I, I don't I don't think so. I mean, I think on an as needed basis, but I think it's probably not not the best use of the person's time to attend our meetings. Mm. I don't know. But to Kathy's point, um, there might be a argument for putting like occasional evening and weekends like yes. commitments like they're well, definitely going to be responsible it's all time is mm -hmm. that was something that was in the original it, job description that went to the personnel board it's here in your work environment it's majority of work is performed in the office right. may be required to work remotely normal business hours if necessary flexible work schedule hours so no, I mean, obviously, I think when when we have a, a larger project, but for tonight to have a planner sit in on this meeting would be a total waste of time. Oh. Mm -hmm. Yeah, for that. Well, oh, that's true. <laughs> but yeah, so I think I think all of these comments are really good. So if you can send them to me, um, okay. today's Monday. Uh, when's a reasonable amount of time? I think probably pretty quick. How about by Wednesday? Sure. Yeah, if you can send them to me by Wednesday, then I'll get them. I'll you know compile them and then um, send them to Casey and CC the select board. Right, because I believe the um, next meeting of the personnel board is in um, it's on the twelfth. It's on the twelfth. Oh, okay. So, and so if if it needs to go through the select board again before the personnel board, it probably. I mean, otherwise we're talking about July for the personnel board. So we just send it directly to the personnel board. I mean, can Casey? Um, I'll ask. Yeah, I mean, we'll we'll send this back to Casey, and then she she'll do what she's going to do. I mean, I don't know. Um, <clears throat> when is the next select board? Meeting? Well, oh, select board. Yeah, right. I mean, they just it, no. Wednesday's what last Wednesday. I don't know this one next week. I'll find out. I'll speak with Casey and see. Yeah, you know, who's going to look at it, when they're going to look at it. And I suppose that, yeah, that's true. There are changes they have to vote them in at the meeting. 
this little clip. Or if they did it individually, if she just sends it out individually, that's fine. And then she can know that. All right, I'll check on that tomorrow. Okay. But it's a good start. Yeah. Okay. All right, so let's see. Next on the agenda is, <clears throat> excuse me, master plan phase one. Not a whole lot. I think we are all, is everyone here on that meeting? With Peggy Sloan. Okay. No, I was not. You weren't. Okay. I just had some notes. I mean, I think that I think in the end we decided that we probably won't be working on that until 2024 because we're finishing up um the uh, our bylaws chapter 179. And so I think we also need grant funding for that to the tune of what approximately thirty thousand dollars. Is that it? Okay. So we'll be hopefully we'll have a planner by then. The planner can write that grant, or you know, we'll work on that together. Um, but I think the first step in doing that, excuse me, is going to do a um, uh, send out a survey to the community in some way, shape, or form, online and for, you know, in person. We spoke about that, and so I think some of the main points we want to have. We definitely want to help seniors help help filling out the survey so maybe we can you know figure that out of the senior center um we'll be having some focus groups the master plan the master plan was done 20 years ago so it's um <laughs> we really need to update that um so there's a fair amount of updates specifically for energy and climate and then let's see we want to look at it through the lens of resiliency and we could potentially apply for community one stuff next year for that so that's pretty much what I have in there. So we'll just table that for now and then we'll revisit that as we you know, get into 2024. She's coming quickly. Okay. So Master Plan, anybody any questions on that? Comments? No? Oh, okay. All right. Chapter 179 review update. Our next meeting with Peggy Sloan is June 26th at 6 p.m. That's just a virtual meeting. And let's see, we did that through. Uh, so, we'll, okay, so I'll have to ask to have that meeting posted. And I mean, we really did. I mean, I didn't even look to see how much we got through, but it wasn't a lot. There's so much to go. Yeah, yeah there's a lot to go through, but we yeah. did. And I think in the meantime, I don't think if you could refresh my memory, did Peggy say she's going to send us any updates or not? She's just going to wait. Okay. She's going to wait till we go through all of it and then send us an update. Okay. When is and, that meeting? I'm sorry. The next one? I'm sorry. June 26th. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah. That's another Monday night, six o'clock. Okay. So. Yeah, so she'll be doing that. And I'm trying to think what else. Is there anything else with that? I need to get through it. Yeah. Well, yeah, I mean, we just, yeah. we just have to get through it. That's true. Yeah. Yeah. It's interesting. Mm -hmm. Okay, my email. Well, if you're on, like, and then you get a forward. I'll send you an email. I think I'm good. Yeah, yeah. Right. <laughs> we'll get Okay. I'll now I'll be stuck in my head till then, but it doesn't take time. I'll send a reminder. Yeah. I usually do that for yeah. our CCI meetings. That's what I remember everything. Right. Okay. All right. Yeah, so in the meantime, um, I'm trying to think where we stopped. I think I put a placeholder in where we stopped. Oh, no, I didn't. No, I didn't. Okay. Yeah, if you want to continue going through that, yeah. and if you have any other questions, we'll go through that as Peggy continues. Yeah, that's a lot of light reading. So just, <laughs> okay, yeah. So I will, I'm kind of ordering, like thinking about where I'm going next. And I think in terms of making notes, I'm going to go backwards and just say this, but I'll do those meeting notes so that we're ready for the 26th. Okay. How's that sound? So. Because um, those are fairly detailed and will help you to remember what you, you know, you have. I have my notes that are really the same, 
But when I do it, I'm yeah. not able to see it. You don't see it. Actually, there was so much. Yeah, but we were really kind of, it was ordered. So yes. Okay. Their numbers. <laughs> their numbers out. Gosh. Okay, that would be great, Rachel. Thanks. Okay, so let's see chapter nine. All right, we're just moving right along. So the next on the agenda is short term rentals. We were talking about this. So, Emily, when we, when we had that, I know we had that on the agenda for last time, but there was so much that we didn't cover. It. And so, the short term rentals, were we talking about Airbnbs? I mean, I'm not really I just sure. remembering, actually, I think things that was on the agenda last time was because Thurkov had sent out a memo to all Thurkov members saying that they had done some research and that many of that they had additional information for. Towns, mm -hmm. but also that towns may want to look at updating their short term rental pieces. But as I recall from a conversation with Peggy, Peggy was kind of feeling that that should wait until that this, what we're doing now is more of a technical review, right? right. Not more of a what? Technical review, yeah. not necessarily um, bringing up new issues or things that might be a little bit controversial. Well, plus we did do some of that when we did the um, ADUs. ADUs, yeah. Because we did we did address short-term rentals with a 30-day cap. Mm -hmm. Right. But now no, we so she talked, we talked with her with Peggy about that. And, uh, you know, the committee. Yeah, certainly. I mean, some towns that are doing a lot with like board of health oversight right. and inspections to make sure kitchens are clean, and then others are not doing much of anything. So it is sort of a decision point if, if in fact, our short term rental bylaws do need to be updated. And it sounded like people thought they should. Mm -hmm. But did you feel like let's just get through it? Sorry, it's like, okay. Sorry, Kathy. Sorry, Kathy. Andy, I mean, I actually um, can hear you. I mean, even though you weren't using the mic, so thank oh, you. See, my okay. voice projects. Well, that's good. Um, but Peggy's advice, I think, right, is just to get through it, make sure that we're like technically where we should be for 2023, and then we can say, all right, let's go back to this one and this one and this one. And make sure that there's like values alignment with the town and things like that beyond just like, is this technically right or is this dated? Because I think a lot of what we're learning in the conservation section is just that it's dated. Like it's just, we know yeah. more now. And so we need to get it into, you know, that now, now I think I do. I think, I think we, what we did talk about, I think you're correct, that we get through all the technical. And then as we go through, we can um, flag ones that are more specific that we want to go back and spend more time on. Mm -hmm. So that would be fine. Mm -hmm. Okay. So we can sort of put that, we can put that on hold and revisit that after we finish 179. Okay. Great. And I think that she also said to do the same with things that, like, we can't necessarily enforce, but we can say, like, suggest. So like um, building like efficiency standards and things like that in new builds and saying like we prefer to see certain things, but we can't necessarily enforce that people do that, but we can make a suggestion. And that was on the list too. And that that just dropped my memory too, because I did say that about enforcement. She said, well, if you have that and you have it written down where people can refer to it that way, we've got we've got some. You know, we can't enforce it, whereas if it's not written down, we can enforce it. So, okay. All right. Well, we'll keep that on. Um, but do that just at a later date. Okay. So, let's see. Uh, the next one is, and I think Amy, Amy spoke about this, and she said it's really helpful, and she did this for the CONSCOM and acceptance of e signatures. So I'm going to, oh, that's, another, that's another thing that the cons did. So if Amy has our e-signatures, then sometimes, I mean, obviously for a &Rs, we've got to come in and do that, but other times 
If it's something that uh, she needs done pretty quickly and it's difficult for someone to get in, it's nice if she has permission to use our e signature. Sure. So, it's, it's really nice. To, um, as a, it's really nice for uh, when I have to do um, continuation forms because a lot of times the people aren't at the meeting. This has happened a lot, and if I can just get e signatures from them, and um, it just makes life easier. Okay. So I move that the uh, Juvenile Planning Board hereby recognize and accept the provisions of MGL. 110 G regarding the use and acceptance of electronic signatures, and that its members will henceforth ex execute documents either with electronic signatures or wet ink, ink signatures, and that both will carry the same legal weight and effect. Emily Mueller, second. All right, and I'll take a vote. Rachel Boyd. Rachel Boyd, yes. Emily Gaylord. Emily Gaylord, yes. Kathy Trumia. Emily Wilkle. Emily Wilkle, yes. Kathy Sylvester. Kathy Sylvester, yes. And Denise Mason, yes. Great. Okay, we're all set. So we'll just wait for you to tell us what you need, Amy. Oops. Yeah, great. Basically, I just need that vote and then I um, write that into a letter to, um, and then I take the letter and have it uh, registered recorded at the registry of deed and then once that's done the e-signatures become legal so that's that's pretty much all i needed was for you guys to vote on that um as as stated great amy do you need us to send you our email signatures um no I, i'm trying to think um and usually what happens is I prepare an Adobe document for signatures and what happens is it will go out to you and there will be um, a spot for your signature. And I don't know if you and Adobe have to like choose a signature. Um, I, you don't send me anything. Basically, you'll get the document and um, I... I she doesn't just use our signature. We, oh, we, it's, she sends it around to all of us and we it's send like, it back. It's like a document. Yeah, it's like a document. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay, great. Thanks, Sammy. Okay, let's see. Where are we next? Any other business not reasonably anticipated? Open burning? No. Okay, public comment. I don't see any public here. No. Okay. I want, can I just say one thing? Yes. That occurred to me. I just want to share this with you. Yeah. Um, Peggy mentioned something that kind of triggered me <laughs> in our last meeting. It was about um, the drive through, mm -hmm. which, by the way, that lack of drive through has been a, a significant um, bit of regulation that has. You know, prevented, for instance, drive through restaurants in our town. Um, anyway, and she mentioned that it was um, really popular, basically, with other towns because of the ease and convenience for seniors to drive through and get. So, to make it just for pharmacy, that was one uh, specific suggestion that she made in the last to make it particularly strong for pharmacy. Um, I, I just want to put out there that we are not just pro seniors, that that is a, an incredible boon to families with small children, and that if we don't start talking about what matters to families with small children as well, we are not doing the right thing. And I think we get very trapped by this. It's very political. Um, it becomes, yes, we're all looking at the senior world, but in fact, without our young people, we are and and we regularly, as a nation and as a town, we step over small children. We just say that's the job of their parents. And so I, I really woke up the next morning just barely lit up about it because if I had had drive through when my children were small, when they're sick and you're alone and you're trying to get medication to your sick child with your other two children hopefully not getting what it was that it was so anyway that 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 put me in a very political moment I, sort of I think that's a really good point Rachel and I think you know we do 
we we've had a lot of conversations about seniors, you know, for a lot of different reasons because we need a senior center. We know that we're working on it, and it's not just the town of Deerfield, it's the town of Waitley, it's the town of Sutherland. Believe me, I've been down in the deep in the trenches with that one. But you're right, we can't forget that. I mean, understanding that the um let's see, the population of Deerfield, I think approximately 45% of Deerfield is over the age of 50, 55, but it doesn't mean to say it's always going to stay that way. And we do have, even though I'm a senior, Emily's not, she's got a young child. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah. Well, just think, so I, I, and I keep the pain. let's be honest, it's not like a senior center or an elementary school, right. that really isn't the way it works. But I just think in the rhetoric, we get very locked into that. And we are an aging town, and that's great. And, and that all is important. But if we're not putting in the cares and concerns of young families, then well, and into, our, into our bucket of concerns. I think, so anyway, I think as a planning board, yeah. one thing that we can be mindful of and committed to is usually when you do something to want to help one part of the population, you help somebody else, right? Mm -hmm. So having drivers capability helps seniors and it helps their families. Yes. It doesn't have to be in more. Also like investing in our schools, we know are really good for our property values. It gives us greater longevity of wealth and intergenerational wealth, right? So like there's reasons to invest in schools beyond if you have children in the school systems. And I think if we can be thinking, especially as a planning board, equitably and collectively, and how if we're all pulling in the same direction, we're going to get somewhere a lot faster. It is better, and I do think that the, and I know this came up at the last town meeting, is when we have meetings and things like that, I think part of the reason we get locked in, and this is very much from personal experience, it's very hard to participate in this town if you have young children. It's hard to get ahead. Right. Yeah, it's hard. It is. And so, listen, I've got a very helpful partner at home, but I'm very lucky and I've only got one kid. And I think if I had two, there's no way I'd be sitting in the seat right now. So, I agree. Emily? Just Emily, just thinking, uh, preaching to the choir, how can we gently give this to you guys? And I thought about it at that moment. It actually, the part of the reason I woke up the next morning is because I was thinking about it as she was saying it. And I was thinking um, that in fact, that's just how she's viewing it. And we don't have to take that up one way or the other, you know, whether we are, is, is that important? I mean, I can tell her next time you yeah. talk and just she, say. That's what she was saying it in a like, no, 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 no. She's aware that this is a hot topic and mm -hmm. people are. Mm -hmm. I, but I'm just, yes, it's a hot topic, but it's a hot topic. A lot of it is because the rhetoric is around senior. It's but, the lens yeah. that she was looking yeah. for. And I think that, and, um, I think, I think it's a national problem. It's not your field. Sure. And, um, and so I, I just want to kind of keep it live for us that we are not just concerned about, we're concerned about, like, if you look at ADUs, and Kathy, right, we talked about this, like, ADUs where people were concerned about bringing children into the schools. Like, Hello? Like, yeah, that's what we do as a nation. That's what, we, that's what we're about. And um, there are going to be families, families with young children are going to live in those ADUs for heaven's sakes, of course they are, because the, the property values are really expensive, but the very people who can't afford to buy a house, seniors actually are living in those houses, right? Mm -hmm. So what we kept talking about was how we could help seniors to live in their houses longer. And, mm -hmm. and I, so I, I, I said, well, good, there's one goal. But there are other goals too. And one is to create housing that's available for young families to, to live in a nice area with a good school. So I'd like to just jump in quick because this ADU, I mean, back in 1970, 1980, it was a new law apartment. And that afforded my mother, who was widowed with six young children, the opportunity to have someone else 
living in the house that she could talk with, that she was not alone with all her kids. We weren't talking politics with my mother, but this person that lived in our house was. <laughs> and there was a couple that were both in graduate school, right? Um, so the multi, you know, faceted reasons why the ADU is important, why supporting families with young children is important, why supporting our seniors is important, is the is the ethos of a healthy community, right? And and as Emily said, everything that we can do to move in that direction is positive. So I would agree, though there is a this sort of political button about how do we support everybody, and in, in doing that, it's inclusive. So I think in talking to Peggy, we we just voice that honestly. Yeah, you know, like yeah, it's going to help. You know, when I got up and it was raining out, when my fourth was born, my first was four and a half. It was a horrible day. I was in and out of my car fifteen times a day in the rain. Right. I mean, so whatever we can do to sort of mitigate the challenge in whatever capacity it presents a family, yeah. Mm -hmm. And I, th I think it's really important. That's why I'm really happy to have Emily on mm -hmm. the planning board because she is a different generation. And I think it's really important. <laughs> no, it's, it's really important to have more, you know, to, I'm really happy that you're able to participate because when I when my kids were young, my husband worked at night a lot. So I had to get a babysitter for every single thing I did, which is difficult. So if I had all that money, you know, I'd be on permanent vacation. Well actually um <laughs> <laughs> you're a senior. <laughs> but anyway, thank you, Rachel, because I think that's a really important point. And I think it's an important point and it's also an important um thing for us as a planning board when we're planning to be thinking about who we're planning for yes. and that really the demographics are much less important as if it's good for the community we should be in favor of that i think that was a really really good reminder so thanks and so I, I just wanted to say one thing and that is this push for a senior center is to me it's not the direction I would like to see the town go. I mean, I, I think we should go into a community center. So you're serving everybody. And um, that, it is going to be that, Kathy. Good, because I keep hearing about a senior center, senior center, but I wish we could change the language. Uh, but, but we can't change. We can start talking. We are, ch we are changing the language. And when I do, do a report on CCI, um, because that, that is a conversation. So yeah. Use that. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Just like we changed it. Mm -hmm. yeah. I mean, I've heard some people talk about it, but it's, I'm still hearing senior center, senior center, senior yeah. center. And it's just <laughs> until there is one. But it, it, it just, it's just more complex because it's not just Deerfield, it's it's three towns. So yeah. we trust me, we are actively working on that. So and Good segue into reports. So, reports of senior housing. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> no, <laughs> I think it's really important. That's right. Uh, that probably the first step to say is that um, we, I think it's a public knowledge right now that we're looking at the possibility of the other church, St. James. St. James, okay. As that name. being a possibility for. Uh, locating senior housing, and so uh, senior housing is picking and getting an appraisal with the land. There is probably a fairly good possibility that it will be out of our range, um, as um, um, as um, what is it that I could I'm not um, sure. I, th I think I think we um, the money that we could get from CPA. Yeah, yeah, the CPA is yeah. 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 It's a process. Yeah. So, if you found a builder, would that be the, the point buying it for the house for the building or buying it for the land? Both, both, both. Yeah. Currently in the 4 H classification, St. James. What was St. James? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's great. What is 4 H? That's 4 H. Yeah, the four H. Oh, oh, yeah. the four. Oh, oh, four H. Oh, you know what? I, I think okay. it may be. I think that the that purchased it, purchased it under the open ramps. Um, okay. I don't know. Well, that would be too continued. Okay. Okay. 
other any other thoughts? Uh, I guess I could say local cultural council. Um, we're now in our grant cycle, so everything was approved over the winter, and now people will be carrying out their funded projects. But I will say why this is relevant. Any more a venue problem? Mm -hmm. so we have mm -hmm. a nowhere. And so in that community center, Denise, I would love to see a venue yes. with some of our amazing yes. local cultural yeah. endeavors. Okay. All right. So, yeah. okay. so that leads us into we just submitted, I've been working with Casey and the grant writer Alice Rich Lewis, who's wonderful. And we submitted the community one step grant, and it's a pre construction grant for the 1821 building, which is the church here. And let me tell you, it's a lot of work getting estimates on, on different things, everything that needs to be done to that. But at any rate, um, we got it up to, I think it's 700 something thousand with an escalation for about, two, it's just under a million dollars. So hopefully we get that grant, we're going to be well on our way. And that is for a senior services community center. And it's not just for seniors. It is to do exactly what you want. It could be a venue. We can hold, um, you can hold plays there. You can hold dinners there. I mean, all sorts of different things. All the different uh, community organizations, like the Beekeepers Association, um, the BFW, uh, the Women's Club. They don't. They really don't have a place to. I think the only two places are Holy Family or the Polish Club. Mm -hmm. That's pretty much it. You know. So. So anyway, so we've got, I mean, we worked really, really hard on this grant and getting information. So um, we've got support from uh, uh, Jim McGovern, from Natalie Blay, from Joe Comerford, from all the towns, and from the Board of Oversight for the Senior Center. So it's, which building is the, which number is it? The 1821? 1820. Yeah, the church. Yeah. So, so that's going so it's a on. It's pre-construction grant? It's a pre-construction because we can't, you can't do construction until <laughs> there's a lot that has to be done. Yeah. We're going to raise the building. We're going to put a new foundation. We're going to dig out the dirt. We're getting rid of the old heating system. We're going to be putting in um, uh, splits, new yeah. heat system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, New windows, I mean, you name it, but we can't do anything until, and there's old knob and two, so you can't do, you can't build anything until all of that is, is taken care of. So, anyway, so that now we just wait because we won't hear anything until I think the latter part of October, early November. And once we get the grant, I'm hopeful, then um, we would get that money in January and we'd start breaking, you know, doing stuff in the fall, uh, the spring of 2024. So, so that's going on. Next thing is we've got the grade that's happening on the 17th. And I did, we made a banner for CCI, we made a banner for the select board. So we're, we're doing that. <laughs> and it's going to be on a hay wagon. So that's going to be exciting. <laughs> the other thing is we, we, we got this grant about a year ago, but unfortunately, since um, the park is no longer on the table. We had to change change gears a little bit, and we'll be putting. Uh, we've got funding. We just got funding approved from the select board to hire an engineer so that we can do uh, crosswalks and beacons across from Frontier and also across from the library. And then I think the chief. Uh, Got a grant to do the same across from Pleasant Street. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be really helpful in slowing down traffic because it's such a dangerous area mm -hmm. around Frontier. Mm -hmm. So that's happening. Let's see what else. Library Building Committee. I don't know if anyone was here um, for the presentation, but that's really going well. I'm on that the building committee along with Tim Hilchey and Julie Chalfont and others. And um, I think we're getting to the point of finalizing the design. I think it's really nice. The architect is wonderful. The OPM the owner's project manager is great too. Um, he's uh, so another thing. Yes. Yes. That was always well, a, that yeah. was always an issue. Yeah. yeah. That was always a hope that the library end up. Yeah, mm -hmm. will be because they will have, if you look at it, you can close off most of the library and at night there will be a meeting room that would be open. Um, I think. Availability to the kitchen, of course, restrooms, and I think that seats about 80 people. 
So that's nice, but unfortunately, I don't think it's the kind of thing where you can say, I want to have a meeting there every month. Yeah. Because, like, yeah, anyway. But I think that's great. Right. So, you know, if someone wanted to give you a beekeeper thing yeah. or, yeah, but yes, they do. Yeah. So they can do that. And that, I believe, I'm not sure when we're breaking ground on that. I think that's somewhere between October and January. And mm -hmm. I'm not really clear on that. And the last thing that I have is this Thursday here. June 8th at 6 p.m. There's going to be a public meeting on the Leary lot, which is, if you don't already know, it's the parking lot. That's okay, everyone knows that parking lot. And Okay. Well, you definitely have to come to me. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, that's, that's all I know. And I think it's Berkshire Design will be presenting the plan. I guess they did new plans on the landscaping and what's happening. What time are they thinking? Um, 6 p.m. here. I mean, I think it's hybrid too. But we did um, we did a trade. We did a, a land, uh, land swap with um, really good people. We can find out all that. No, the new one. Oh, Cam Shaw, yeah, Cam Shaw. Yeah. <laughs> a plan switch for Cam So what's going to happen is you um, you enter in on North Main, but then you exit on Ellen Street. So it'll be better for traffic. And then hopefully Berkshire Brew will eventually put their beer garden, so it'll be adjacent to the uh, parking lot. So that would be good too. So that's that's the meeting on Thursday, and that's all I got. But that's a lot. <laughs> The, the 300 days, the 300 parade was one of the hottest days of that year. And there were like water stations all along the, and people were just fainting. <laughs> fainting fast. It's my memory. I was very young at the time. You were like two. Yeah, well, barely. I mean, I do remember people fainting the whole parade. Like, I was really sad. Oh my gosh. Well, the parade, as far as, as far as I understand, it's going to take about two hours. I know. So I'm really looking forward to sitting on a hay wagon two hours. Or a good hat. Yeah. 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 Well, it's it's going to be a nice weather. That's not going to be a parasol. Yeah. Well, there you go. Go with a hat with the umbrella. Yeah. Okay. All right. So that's, that's that for tonight. Yeah, I don't think there's anything else. Can I move that we adjourn? It is 8.42. Seven. 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 So our next meeting is yes. June twenty sixth. Yes, June twenty sixth, and I will, I will send out a reminder. Thank you. Thank you for this. All right. So meeting adjourned. Meeting adjourned.